everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. I'm glad I got that tongue that tongue twister down. <laughs> and with my usual cohorts, Krieger Roger One and Orphan Joker. So, what's the title of the movie? Sonic the Hedgehog Two. Doctor Robotnik returns with the, with new help and knowledge from Knuckles the Akenda about the master old master old, the master emerald and its full power. <laughs> Sonic must stop them from achieving the, this power with the help of his new friend, Miles Tails Per Hour. Now, the numbers. Bigger margin. Okay, so this movie uh, has a, a high budget of $110 million. And so far, to this date, it is currently box office at $241,461,409. So, is, yeah. So they have more than doubled their, their budget in the first week. This might be one of the best video game adaptations money-wise that they've made in movies. Mm -hmm. That's performance-wise. Critics put, put this film at a 6.8. Uh, Losers. Audience puts the film at 9.7. Those are awesome. Also, one thing to think about, this is a part of our Jim Carrey Yes, as uh, well. Review. As of right now, as this video is being recorded, is this going to be a normal review? But once we get through the Carrey Career Review... It'll be on the, the Carrie Jim Career Carrey series. playlist. It will be on the Jim Carrey playlist. So this will be the very last view video on the Jim, on the Carrie Career series. Unless it take forever when he has another movie. Okay, so for trivia, um, the one small thing that, that I liked, which if anyone watched the first two movies, it's, it's a small message, but it's a good one. Um, in the first movie, you can see Sonic playing uh, baseball by himself. Mm -hmm. At the end of the second one, you can see him playing baseball with all of his friends. Tails' real name is Miles Per Hour. It's a pun on Miles Per Hour. It's a pun on Miles Per Hour. Miles pa Per Hour. Whenever so uh, Sonic sneaks out to go be Blue Justice, um, he, he has a prop that's in, that's in place. Um, do you guys know what that prop it looks like and is loosely based off of? It has a prop? Yeah. The, the thing that he had the audio recording on, so whenever he came in the room, it started farting and said, hey, go away. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Um, what's uh, it based on? Uh, Sanic. Oh, yeah. I remember. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, Looking yeah. Looking at the face now, it does look, look a little bit like Sanic. Uh, goofs. Um, at one point, Robotnik um, ends up on his butt after jumping forward. It was when he was trying to go under the door. This is one that I actually noticed in the movie, and it a little pissed me off. So, uh, and I'm glad that this was on here so I could do it. So, while they were driving in the beginning, um, he was he was driving the car, and there's the guy that was tied up behind him, and he had duct tape on him. So, Sonic reached back and pulled the duct tape off. The only problem is, between where Sonic was and where the guy was, was a metal grate that he could not have reached through. But he tore it off anyways. Did you guys not notice that? I did not. No, I think it was too quick. Like, I was just having a fun time watching the movie. That's true. I do have pros, com cons, and comments on this film. Um, I felt like the CGI looked fantastic, if not better than it was in the first film. Like, it's like a huge improvement and everything. They, all the characters in the film look exactly how they were supposed to look in there and everything. They didn't make the same mistake like they did in the first trailer of Sonic when the first film was coming out. Um, there was lots of comedy. And the... Uh, Sometimes when it comes to movies like this, if you can sometimes overdo comedy, but I feel like with a character like Sonic and the actor Jim Carrey, like you can't overdo comedy when you have those two things going at the same time. So it's like it's perfect, and for it being a kids movie, it's also really good for kids as well. Um, Jim Carrey. <laughs> This has got to be one of his best performances I have seen in a very long time. Like, for, like, cur like, currently. Like, I'd say this is better than his performance in the first Sonic film, and he was great in the Sonic film. Like, I was busting my ass off laughing the entire time. Every time that man came onto the screen, he would say something, and I would start laughing. Like, there was one point, and everyone in this room can agree with this, because we were the only five in the theater, because it was during, yes. it was during the week... That there was one line that Jim Carrey said in the movie, I was laughing so hard, you could probably hear my laughter all the way to the exit door, <laughs> going back into the lobby, because it, I just died laughing, and I've never done that for a Jim Carrey film in a long time. <laughs> um, I felt the world and character building is done very, very well in this film. Like, for what they had to deal with, and like kind of building their own universe, also trying to tie in 
the other like Sonic stuff and everything was done perfectly. Um, Idris Elba, his voice acting for Knuckles was like great and, and whatnot, and his way of portraying Knuckles as he's supposed to be in the games and the comics was spot on because yes, Knuckles is red, he is big and strong, but he's also an idiot. <laughs> He's a yes. very big idiot, and you, people can probably dock that off for some people who are not really well knowledge about Sonic. But yes, Knuckles in the story is an idiot, and I felt like the outcome of this film was satisfying. I actually liked the ending of this movie and, and whatnot. If we didn't have the end credit scene, which I'll get into in my comments section, that's it's a pretty good like. If this was going to be the last Sonic film that we're ever going to get, I liked how that film ended. Like it was a good ending. A movie. I have one con, but it's not really like a, a huge one. It's kind of nitpicking. Um, I felt like when it came to like transitioning in between like the wedding scenes and the battles between Knuckles and Sonic and Robotnik and Tails, I felt like it wasn't like super jarring, but it was just kind of like some of the transitions in between the scenes felt like it was just like, like it, it was just like, oh, okay, we're back at the wedding now. But I mean, they had to make sure we didn't forget about the other characters and everything. I felt like Rachel was actually a, more of a likable character in this film than she was in the first one. I hated, she was getting teared up in a chair. I, I hated, hated her chair. character in the first movie so much, but then in this movie, I actually liked her character a bit more. She, <laughs> The illogicalness of her driving that go-kart and then doing a, like a need for speed drift move and then calmly stepping off of it in high heels and a wedding dress made no sense, but I was just like, what the fuck? Now, comments. I have two things to bring up. Jim Carrey's one-liners in this film, I thought were great. Yeah, there's depending on your political affiliation, <laughs> you might not like some of them because he did have he like said stuff that Trump has said before. Like, I didn't like notice. The, okay, so at the, I don't know if there's multiple things, but I don't follow one. politics. I thought it was hilarious, but some people might get butt hurt. Whenever he was trying to convince Sonic when he knew he well, Robotnik knew he was beat, he was like, "Listen, there are good people on both sides." Here. <laughs> <laughs> See, like I would, I didn't notice that because I thought that was just him trying to be like, "Hey, like, listen, like, I'm, I'm yeah, just trying to get my last." Yeah, it was totally a reference to that. Um, the, the so going back to the part where I was dying, laughing, crying. Look, the coming and getting line. The fact that he was like, he was like in midair because of all the power from the master room only skipping in the midair and then went to the robot, looked like it was jumping and skipping. And the fact that you can tie in so many jokes into that fucking three lettered line there. It's just. And, and Jim Carrey said that he, his favorite part of the movie was when he was all powered up. And the different things he could do with the character, because he 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 said that he was like on cloud nine, like filming that. God, like it, like it was just bring, hilarious. Bring back the good old, especially old the Jim voice Carey. change. He really yeah. liked the voice change to make himself. That was when he loser. That that was when he was like loser. funniest. Like that was the part of the film where I was just like I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> the other comment I want to bring up is Shadow the Hedgehog. Like, I'm actually very excited, and I, all of you saw me grab the chair in front of me and fucking shook it. Like, like, to me, really that's much. what made this film very good. Just, yes. just going from really good to very good. Because they introduced Shadow the Hedgehog at the very end, saying, oh, this is going to be the next character they could if, bring in. If they would have ended it without having some kind of teaser for Shadow, and then in the credits, by the way, it says uh, Shadow will return at the very end of the end. I'm just, did you say till the very end? He mm -hmm. did. Anyway, so isn't that, didn't Marvel do that with Thanos? Uh, they did that with, like, a lot of Marvel films. Yeah, like, isn't yeah. that, like, a Marvel thing to say that? Yeah. Interesting. If they were to actually follow Shadow's actual, like, story and everything, they need to have Dr. Robotnik in there, because Dr. Robotnik is the one who created Shadow from, like, the, the DNA of Sonic and everything. And we know that recently that Jim Carrey has talked about doing, like, retirement or whatever, and only will come back to, if the script is good enough... I feel like that this is the only franchise that he would come. Well, back I bet for. he had so much fun. He's just been like, "Oh, you can." I, I feel like he, I feel like he will come back for a third film because oh. this. I think the first two Sonic films, he's had so much fun. It's like it's like a career revival. For do you him. think we'll see a fat? He Jim, wants to do he, Jim Carrey in a fat suit. He wants to do Fat Eggman. I was kind of hoping whenever he got the whenever he got the emerald, it was just going to make him really fat. And yeah. then put him in a fat suit. Like it was, and that's another thing. The suit he got with the emerald and everything was like all black. Was mainly black with some green like highlights or whatever. It was like a recolor. And 
okay, like so he hit the. I was having we went major like childhood good memory flashbacks when he had the black and green suit, and I was like, he's acting like the Riddler all over yes, again. Yes, he is. I loved it. <laughs> I thought it was yeah. like this is like prime Jim Carrey Riddler right here with the goofy. All the good with like the mask is. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Stay, stay tuned, peeps, for the for the Jim Carrey movies. Yes. So those are my thoughts on Sonic the Hedgehog two and Jim Carrey's performance. I thought the film was great, and this is possibly a franchise that could revive his career. Unlike pretty much everything we've reviewed ever, I know quite a bit about Sonic the Hedgehog, including the comics and all the animated series and the games, because I'm a Nintendo boy, Nintendo Sega boy, so, you know, like, just... I like me some Sonic. I absolutely love... That they put in more chili dogs in this movie. I don't can't remember if there's chili dogs in the first movie, but you can't have Sonic without chili dogs. And so when he gets ultimate power at the very end, and he just like summons a giant chili dog, I was like, yes, this is awesome. So things I liked in this movie: Sonic is Sonic. Sonic is the same high, fast, super crazy, goofy, carefree kind of guy who um, cares for his friends. Uh, it's something that's very deep. I think they did a really good job of bringing Sonic in and bringing in Tails and bringing in Knuckles. I know that with the original Sonic, people were worried about the way it looked, and so they fixed it. They did a really good job of of the uh, the the character design for Tails and Sonic. Like the the way the fur wrinkles on their nose is really good. The way that you can see this the echidna spikes in in uh, Knuckles. um, Knuckles' hair. All the way you can see the tail spinning. You and could, the backpack on... You could see Sonic's, the Sonic's nose wet like throughout the film. Yeah. Like, like All three characters were portrayed like perfectly. Like That's how they are. Which is really good the, because the, the that was a struggle more. with the first one, so I was worried about that. Shadow was also looked really good at the end. Oh, God. I'm um, so excited. <laughs> throw out the Jim Carrey. I love to be some Jim Carrey. And this was like epic Jim Carrey. My favorite line of all time is when he gets the coffee, he goes, Ugh, needs more mushroom. <laughs> it's my favorite because it's like him at the beginning too I talked you weren't at work with me peeps but at work I told a friend I was like no joke like there's just like a long seed of Jim Carrey just like spinning out mushroom coffee and it just it's so good it's like the best way to start up the movie um, and like the little robots twisting his mustache and him like going crazy and floating around his floaty thing I loved it. Coming Absolutely and getting it. and coming and getting and coming, coming and, and getting. getting, getting, getting. <laughs> or, or the like the like him 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 running around the maze. Woo ha hey woo ha woo wah. <laughs> it was like watching his nineties films again, like yes. back in the heyday. Like I feel like he was just having like again. I'm saying these two films are like he's having the greatest time of his life. If you watch some of the old Sonics, some of them Eggman never leaves his little bubble, and then other ones he like runs around and goes ah. So it, it kind of was like that. Not so much. He mostly spends his time in his little floaty bubble. So, things that were awesome. Um, Tails gets his biplane. Sonic and Tails, epic friendship. Um, Knuckles' is power, Tails' is power, and Sonic's power. Something that, that isn't always portrayed in the animated series, I I any of them, as compared to the game, is that Knuckles, Tails, and Sonic are all fast and all have powers. In most of the animated series, unlike the comics, and unlike the original game, Tails is kind of sucky. I mean, he has this cool tech, and he's super techy, which they bring out in this movie too, but he's not very fast. And so having all three of them fast, and having their color trail behind them, is a poke back to the original Sega game, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Also, Eggman getting his egg bubble, and floating around in his egg bubble, him having his big, super cheesy mustache... Uh, there's a moment, so these are all Easter eggs, there's another moment where uh, his henchman is swiping through characters, and it literally shows fat Eggman, just for a split second. Really good. They go around to different lands and all do chase scenes, which are ones from original games. A lot of people don't know about the history. A lot of people have like, Wakanda Knuckles, you know, this is the way. But there is actually a large section of comics specifically for Knuckles and his backstory. And so them touching into that in this movie, because they didn't touch it into it in the first movie, is really cool. Mm. Things I did not like. Universal world building. Um, in any, any of the originals, 
any of the comics. They're all from the same place. In this story, Knuckles, Tails, and Sonic are all supposed to be very far apart, which is completely ridiculous because they all wear the same stinking shoes. So in the first movie, they mention that Sonic gets his shoes from his new family. Where did Knuckles and Tails get their shoes from? Because well, they have the same Tails shoes. Just made his. Huh? Tails could have just made his. I know, but it's 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 that idea. Mm-hmm. The other is something that I've been running through my head to make sure specifics, but after running it through my head, it doesn't make any sense. At the end, Shadow pops up. They mention he's in a lab made 50 years before. That's okay, because it doesn't mean that they made him 50 years before. But after uh, Robotnik figures out the little electro-zappy thing, he's only able to make... One thing, and immediately attack Sonic. He doesn't have time to go back to his lab, study the whole thing, do all this crazy stuff, and start Shadow. But at the same time, Shadow exists? So where did Robotnik have time to work on Shadow? That, and why didn't he reference it or mention it at any point? That could have been either something that they just didn't explain in the the, 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 the story, mm-hmm. like on screen or whatever. That could have been off screen or something. Or that could have been like something that his henchmen could have done who knows and yes. whatnot and the base could have been made like long long before this yes. whole thing and he just started. did it quickly kind of it's like just, yeah. making Mewtwo Pokemon you know yeah they had it my only struggle with that is it's supposed to be Robotnik's way of getting back Robotnik also has several other things that he tries including Robo Sonic there's actually a fun episode oh, where yeah where Sonic gets flipped personality wise and it's that's a cool episode they don't have to do it Another, oh, another Easter egg. If anybody has seen Sonic the Hedgehog, you'll know Sonic turning super gold and flying around. It was super epic. It's really cool. Really liked it. I'm glad they put that in there. If they wouldn't have put it in there, it would have been pretty weird. The other thing is he's supposed to have like a giant ring as well, but that's a different story. We're not going to get into that. I was worried about the Sonic rings, telling how they were using the Sonic rings to teleport to different places, but... It's not so bad. That's something I can overlook that. It's really the, cool. That's probably written into the story for this franchise. Yes, that, and so that was something that was bothering me in the first movie. We haven't done a first review, so I'm putting that in this one. Yes. Um, so I'm worried about the shadow thing because if they if they don't put in that it came from Sonic, I feel like it's going to make a bunch of people upset because that's supposed to be the traditional story. Um, I don't like that they're all separated. I do like that they're all friends, and I did really like the the color trails behind them. Really cool. I really liked it. It's just really weird to say they're all from like different worlds and different dimensions, but they look exactly the same. That was kind of weird. But the storytelling of you know Sonic's all alone. He lost his only family. Uh, Tails is a lonely guy who's kicked out by his family. Knuckles is the last one of his tribe, and they all get together and become friends at the end. And uh, as Knuckles says, I I have conquered the base of second, or the second of base. <laughs> I really, really, really like this movie. Jim Carrey does an amazing job in this movie. Um, one thing that I didn't like, but I expected it, is any movie where they they have like a CGI additive. So like the, the Smurfs, uh, Garfield, um, uh, what's a hop? They always do weird scenes, like side tangent scenes, where they have the, character, the per- human here and the, the animated person here, and it kind of looks all weird. That didn't happen in the first one. The first one was very cohesive. They kept kind of dark themes any time that happened. It wasn't all weird, liney, and it's where, the, it's where the character's kind of fuzzy, but the person's like super crisp. And it just, it's a weird thing that I've noticed in some of the movies. It's, 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 it's more of a nitpick, but that's something I noticed in this movie that I didn't notice in the first one. I liked Sonic being a little more zippy. In this one, he looked bigger and more kiddish. He looked a little more serious in the last one. But the last one was a lot more, like, serious depth trauma for Sonic. Okay, so mine should not be super long on this. Um, uh, my positives is everything. Um, my negatives was going to be nothing, but then I realized something that I did not like about this movie, and neither of you guys mentioned it. I understand this is a tr- children's movie, but the family was super is super cringe, super 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 overly cringe. I mean, yeah, super let's go family. get our son now. Yeah, it, like, it's cringy and everything, but like that's part of the Sonic story and everything, and also part of the whole like f- 
we're trying to bring families into Washington and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So that's just part of it. I understand. Of the, that that uh, is the, my only nitpick. That it was a little, it was a little over the top cringe for me on some of the parts. Like too I like the door, boat donut thing. lordy. <laughs> it, it was just them turning around saying that, and then like, "Hello, Dad." Kind of. It's like they definitely. I feel like added this family from the first one going over to the second one. Make it yeah, more relatable. With all the other materials, Sonic's basically like full grown, and I've only seen him like work with like kids and like one adult and like all of his other friends. Yeah, so. I didn't even after the first one, I didn't even take into account that he was a kid mm-hmm. until in this one, and, and I'm just like, wait, why is he getting in trouble to go save people? And it's like, oh, so it's also slightly bigger, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Um. Only anyway, so that is my positives, I guess. <laughs> I was like, that's it. This is what's surprising me. Is that most video game to movie adaptations are either okay, average, slightly good, or fucking atrocious. And <laughs> yes, uh, we've seen I think two of them this year already and whatnot. And one of them was we, a, one of them being Uncharted, and that one was a big disappointment. Honestly, I would say yeah. this film was. Granted, they're making their own source material by using old source material and building off of that. But what they're doing, I think, is fantastic. And it's surprisingly, like... Like, I think the only other, like, video game movie adaptation that I enjoy a whole lot is the very first Silent Hill movie. Because it's its own... They, they take the material, make their stuff, own stuff out of it, and they create a great story and everything. They do the same thing that they're doing for these, for these two movies. And... I am going to have to pretty much agree with the audience's score and give it like a nine and a half, honestly, because it's 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 really really close to being a a, a perfect movie for me, uh, and I'm rating it pretty high, I would say, but this is really good. So on a scale of one to ten, how much Jim Carrey is this G- movie? Jim Carrey is ten out of ten in this film. Oh. Somebody tell the fat lady she was on in five. I, I, I am, I, these guys can say, no, I'm a Jim Carrey fanatic. I don't care what anyone says about his, him going crazy, his political views or whatnot. When it comes to his comedy and his acting chops, Jim Carrey is a comedic god in my eyes. So this film shows all of his fucking star power, all of his great heydays from back in the nineties. He like, he like draws the energy from back then and pours into this movie. It's Perfect. Jim Carrey a 10 out of 10 in this film. My rating will actually be pretty close. For Jim Carrey? Um, for both. Um, J- I feel like Jim Carrey is 10 out of 10. <laughs> this is the most Jim Carrey. If this is his last movie, then he can say I went out with a good... Oh, that's the other thing that he, that he had a reference of. Okay, so um, in the movie, I don't remember exactly what scene it was, but he had said... Um, I'm enough at one point. Like, do you guys remember the, the context behind it? Hmm. It, it, so, it was, some, it was something like, it, after he's the strongest in the world, he's, he, you know, he could retire or something, or like, maybe I'm enough, or he's going to get captured. And he's like, oh yeah, he was like, I'm going to do all, all this to the world, I'm going to enslave everybody and make them, you know, do all that. And he's like, oh, and then maybe I'll be enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so he referenced that to an interview that he did because in his interview, he, he whenever he announced that he was that he's probably going to be retired unless something magical happens and he relaxes the script. Is this he pre-Sonic said he, he, this is after Sonic has come out, like a recent interview he did. Um, in the actual interview, he had said, "I'm going to I'm going to say to you what what you'll almost never hear any actor say. I'm enough, and I'm happy with my life." My rating for this film is a nine point five. Oh, 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 so far it's been the same across the board. Um, this is almost a perfect movie, um, especially for what it is. I think this goes down as the best video game adaptation movie that we have re- reviewed. On a scale of Jim Carrey, I'm going to give this like a 10.2. Now that's impressive! <laughs> it is beyond Jim Carrey. I'm going to say that 10 is perfect. Um, because it's on a different scale than Josh's, uh, Josh's opinions about how much he wants to watch the movie next. Um, this was super Jim Carrey. Specifically for Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Robotnik is a 100%, 100% unrelatable character. In fact, you kind of love the fact that he gets beat up all the time, and he makes really funny-looking facial 
uh, gestures, especially in the games, too. And so Jim Carrey brought that facial expression and but and, and made this, like, slimy, snotty, goobery guy that you wanted you wanted to make fun of and you wanted to laugh at. That, that at no point it's like, oh, that poor little guy. You're like, get him, bro. Get Robotnik. That's stupid. That little dummy little. It's, I don't know. I felt like that. It was, he did a really, really good job. His ability to do like 16 different takes of the same mushroom but make it different was so good at the very beginning. That's like, that's actor skill right that, there. That comes from just being good at comedy too. Yes. As a Sonic movie review, I'm going to rate this kind of like movies I've done in the past that um, if in the next movie, when they make a next movie, uh, they do something wrong with Shadow, I'm going to do like bowling. And uh, I'm going to reduce some points from this last movie because that's – that's a, they're, they've already ensued doubt in me for the next movie because of stuff. But it has that good feel. It's got the comedy. It's got the drama. It's got the action. It's got the character development. And so that, that's what it takes to get an 11, which is a Mario plus one mushroom. You know, it makes it – it feels like it added something to my life, and I want to watch it like right now. So, I'm going to give this movie, just like Jim Carrey, a 10.2. That is... this. That is our thoughts on Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and our continuation of the Jim Carrey career review slash series. So, when you get to... The playlist of the Jim Carrey career series. This will be the last one on the playlist, unless he makes something else. You're giggling again. I just had a random. I'll show you afterwards. I just had a random thought. <laughs> so that is that. That's our thoughts on both of those. Um, if you enjoyed this review and want to see more content from us, just let us know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, join the madness. Like always, this is Mike Check ninety five, along with my two usual cohorts. Trigger margin one on his phone, and or for Joker, holding he referenced the Shadow Sonic. That was one of my favorite games. <laughs> and we are oh, signing Sonic. out. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night.